the term novel is actually applied to such a wide variety of writing that it is practically easier to define what a novel is not than what it is but still for the sake of you know the students and the beginners will focus on a on a kind of a working definition of the novel so generally we are told that a novel is or the novel is a realistic prose fiction of considerable length now if we concentrate on this then we will see a few features of the novel included in the definition which distinguishes it from its close contenders or allies the first thing is that realistic by and large the forte of a novel has been realism of course there are changes and variations especially in postmodern times and postmodern ethos there are novels which resort to things like surrealism and magic realism but exceptions always are exceptions to a rule or the rule so the rule is the novels are realistic that is why uh, the high tide of the novels uh, that is the 19th century victorian era was also the high uh, i mean also the appropriate point at which realism shot up to prominence then secondly prose a realistic prose fiction realistic and fiction these two things may seem contradictory but actually they are not by realistic what is implied is that you know these are not fairy tale like things things should be as aristotle had said in drama should be narrated in such a way that they look plausible there are exceptions like jonathan swift's gulliver's travels whether it is a novel or not that is again another matter but by and large plausibility and possibility but then at the same time fiction means this should not be an actual story in that case that will be an autobiography or a narration etc but not a novel so realistic and fiction i assume we understood now prose that is important because there are many poems or long poems which have both these features that is realistic and fictional chaucer stories for instance there are some stories which are both realistic and fictional and of considerable length the third point but still since they are in prose sorry in poetry or in verse we cannot call them novel so one basic criteria is that it must be in prose so novel is a realistic prose fiction but then again of considerable length a short story can also be a realistic prose fiction but it is say written in five pages then we cannot call it a novel again there are exceptions there are novels in poems basically uh, so far as i know only one prominent that is bikram shares the golden gate but again as i say this is an exception so a realistic prose fiction of considerable length is a novel and generally uh, prose fictions of shorter length are called uh, novella or novelette etc now going to its history i mean the history of the term itself this term novel is basically an adjective which means new it is still used in this sense in english though a bit archaic say novel ideas that means new ideas it originates with the latin term novus which means new then again in latin novellas then novello in italian from that in italian novella storia new story so when from that gradually through french novelle we come to the english novel so it implies that it's a new story the term more or less the old french term novelle you know was in wide use during the 16th century which is more or less the time when novels started coming into emergence novels as we understand them now not fictional uh, i mean fictional and highly fantasy oriented fictional stories like the epics for instance nor they are you know mostly beast fable and beast allegories etc as we have in aesop's fables and not like fairy tales so please remember the realistic prose fiction so going by that criteria the first novel of 
any significance or I mean great significance is in English is generally identified to be Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. It was published in 1719. So today, you know, it's 14 January 2020, 2021. So more than 300 years back. More than 300 years old, the first novel, it, it matches all this description. So this is generally taken to be an ideal novel, a realistic prose fiction of considerable length. Again, it's sequel by Defoe himself, Moll Flanders, 1722. However, older stories like Pilgrim's Progress, which was published in 1678, or Afrabans Urunuku, which is very important now. These are sometimes treated as the first novel, but the general trend is again to treat Robinson Crusoe as the first novel. And then there was there was some there were some Elizabethan stories also, but then again this is this is very personal if someone wants to treat it as a novel, not accepted widely. So the unfortunate traveller by Thomas Nash, for instance. Now, coterminous with this description of this realistic prose fiction of considerable length, what is also important content-wise is that the novels are generally stories of quote-unquote vagabonds, quote-unquote homeless, quote-unquote the exilic. That is, they are not stories of the subtle people generally. So, if you look at Robinson Crusoe, it is about a person who faced a shipwreck and was exiled. The same with, you know, Moll Flanders, who is ill at ease with her home. If you look at Gulliver's Travels, it is about travels, narratives. So, later people, I mean later critics, have also related the origin of the novel to the origins or consolidation of imperialism or the empire. In this regard, the most important text is Edward Said's, in a way we can call it second magnum opus, if there is a term like that, Culture and Imperialism. There, Said categorically states that the rise of the novel and the rise of colonialism are two sides of the same coin. Before Said, generally, the rise of the novel was related to the rise of realism which is also related to the rise of industrial capitalism in this regard there is another important book which was in our generation sort of uh, kind of a bible or the bible for the history and theory of the novel this is Ian watts the rise of the novel uh, one may still read it it was followed closely by arnold cattle's an introduction to the English novels in two volumes. So I have named three books which would profit the scholars and uh, MA students. Even if you don't read the whole book as of now, as MA students especially, you should know what they're about. Uh, try to read at least the introductions. And then there is a contemporary book about the history of the novel, which includes in a way all these aspects not so much the colonial aspect, but then includes all the other aspects and then does it in a better way, is that fabulous uh, theorist's fabulous book, Terry Eggleton's The English Novel, An Introduction. It is, it is a contemporary book. Then, having said that the novel has its origins in the stories of the exilic or the unhoused, there are other aspects to it. One of the aspects is related to this is the novel was uh, the novel was a product of the picaresque narrative tradition. Picaresque means picaro in Spanish is a rogue, and this used to be a typical story concerning the I quote escapades of an uh, rascal who lives by his wits and shows little if any alteration of character through a long succession of adventures. This is M.H. Abrams. So, uh, and they do not follow the Aristotelian recommendation of plot because they include everything that happens to a person's life only because they happen to that person's life without any cause and effect relation. And again, the peak, or uh, I mean, for the sake of a pun, I am using it, the peak of the Picard extradition was reached by you know, 
that very famous novel Don Quixote of Cervantes. Original Spanish pronunciation is Don Quixote perhaps. But in English, we call it Don Quixote. If you don't trust me, look at the EPD, English Pronouncing Dictionary by Daniel Jones. Anyway, so, but then there are other, other novels like this. Don Quixote was published in 1605, but then later novels like Mark Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Thomas Mann's The Confession of Felix Krull, and uh, still later Saul Bellows' The Adventures of Oki Marge are in the Picarist tradition. If you look at it that way, Arvind Adhika's The White Tiger, which has become a very popular contemporary novel, is also very much in the Picarex tradition and then it extends the Picarex tradition to the degree of criminality. So the Picarex tradition is one aspect. We have covered colonialism in Picarex tradition. Then another interesting aspect of the novel is that According to quite a few critics, this is a genre which, if not exclusively belonging to women, has its origins in women's autobiographies. And then women had a considerable space or earned a considerable space in this genre rather than any other. If we look at it, you know, Jane Austen, the prime novelist according to F. R. Lewis of English literature, then George Eliot, basically Mary Ann Evans, the great success of the Bronte sisters, and Virginia Woolf, the Irish Modoc. You know, there are, you will not find such names in play or even in poem, I mean in other genres, I mean female names, as much as you find in the novel. One reason is that Unlike the story or the poem or the play, the novel is a non-classical genre, quote-unquote, non-classical. That is, it is not in the tradition of European history, culture, traditions, non-Aristotelian in brief. That is why the novel, as I said earlier, means the new, it is something new. So when a genre is new, people who are new, they can do well uh, in it. You see, so many Indian English writers who have written English novels are very successful. Naipal, though technically not exactly Indian, but of Indian origins. Salman Rasti, by and large. So, but you, you cannot find Amitav Ghosh. Why could they do this? But you won't find similar things, you know, say in English epic, similar achievements in English epic. You will not find English epic written by Indians being so successful. There is only one by Sri Aurobindo Savitri. But then these are, it is basically followed by scholars and Aurobindo's devotees, for example. Or say plays. Indian English playwrights have written plays, but they are not as successful as plays written by, I mean, novels written by Indian English writers. So the cause lies in the very fact of the novel being a non-classical genre. This is my view, there may be other views. And so this is how the, you know, there are these three important aspects of the novel. And when we come to the romantic age, after these beginnings with Jonathan Swift and Robinson Crusoe mainly, and then Richardson and Richardson's Pamela, and uh, Richardson's contemporaries, these are in a way the beginnings of the novel, but the consolidation and height of the novel was reached in the Victorian age and before that the Gothic tradition in the Romantic age gave it some kind of a background. So uh, on this we will do a separate video, but I would just like to end this lecture with introduction of a subgenre within the novel that is epistolary novel. An epistle, E P I S T L E, means letter. We have Alexander Pope's an epistle to Dr. Arbatnot. So, Pamela and Richardson's Clarissa, these are actually uh, epistolary novels in so much so that the novels are written as you know, in the format of letters, you know, they appear that they are letters, someone writing to some other person. 
a modern then they're split into different parts you know different letters combining and making the novel in modern times there has been a classic epistolary novel in a way but then there is no exchange and the whole novel is a single letter is J.M. Kurzius The Age of Iron so the thing is often novel is a realistic prose fiction but there may be other machinations within the genre and this this was what I wanted to introduce today so please remember the issues the novelty of the genre the primacy of realism the its significance and importance of exilic of the exilic figure in the novel as well as the primacy of the colonial spirit of the novel or the colonial rise of the novel and also the space given by the novel to women writers as well as writers from the colonies even as they were giving space to the novel so there is some kind of a mutual and contrapuntality here Thank you.